Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover various commission activities and anything that might be of interest to Nebraska librarians. We have guest speakers sometimes and we have commission staff to do presentations as we have today. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They're free, last about an hour or whatever it takes, and they are all recorded. We now have over 80, um, I just counted yesterday, <laughs> over 80 archived recordings that wow. you can listen to. We started doing this um, January 2009 was the first one. So, um, can you believe we have yes. more than 80 things we want to talk about? <laughs> and the list is growing. <laughs> and I don't think we've had any real repeats of topics either. So, I don't think great. so either. <laughs> um, so, this morning we have, as I said, um, commission staff here. Um, oh, you don't have your, I assume you have your name somewhere else. Yeah, my name's on the last slide. Okay. Um, Mary Jo Ryan, who is our um, communications person here at the Library Commission. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that. Um, who's going to talk to us, sorry, about um, Big Read um, book discussions at your library. So I'm going to turn it over to Mary Jo, and um, you can go for it. Go for it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. Good morning, everyone. Um, today, we are talking about the National Big Read program. Um, it, we're actually going to talk more about how you, right now, can use this Big Read program in your libraries if you'd like to. The national program, and let's just go on to the next slide. What do I do here? Space bar? No. Try again. There we go. All right. The National Endowment for the Arts has created a program, and it started, I believe, in about 2004, to provide funding to libraries to do book discussions. And this program has been going on. It's been going great guns ever since. Let me go to up. Oh, uh, website actually um, and, and it created an opportunity for libraries that wanted to write and other organizations that wanted to write grants and do special dis book discussions on special books and special topics but it also now has created an opportunity for all of you because we have materials from these programs that you can use in your own library whatever way you want I'm thinking I should be able to move that now yeah there we go Okay, so here we are at the National Endowment for the Arts, the Big Read website. Um, is that coming through okay, or do I need to make it bigger? Probably fine. No, it, it's, um, we seem to be frozen up in our broadcast. Our camera, our camera or our frozen? Can you see us, everybody? Can you let us know, um, can you still hear us? Hello? If you can still hear us, let us know Everything. by typing in the chat box. Or raising your hand, which is a an icon you can click on. Of course, if you can't still hear us, you won't hear me saying this. <laughs> We're having a little technical difficulties today. Well, it looks like it from my end. And does it look like it's frozen at what? Like it never went to this website? Yeah, and our camera is frozen. But nobody's saying anything either. Hello, can anybody hear us out there? See, if they could hear us, they would have said so, because that's what I asked them to do. Yes, they can see and hear us. Okay. If <gasps> you can see and hear us. Okay. okay. Go ahead. All right. Ahead. So you can actually see so this can website, see website, and you there? can hear me talking. Okay, great. Um, what I want right. to do is tell you a little bit about this program. Um, they called it Creating a Nation of Readers, and it's to inspire people across the country to pick up a good book listen to radio programs, watch video profiles, and read some brief essays about classic authors. That was their goal. And the way they decided to do it, this was based upon um, some research that they had commissioned, which, oh dear, that's not very good, okay, <laughs> which was called Reading at Risk, a Survey of Literary Reading in America. Oh, look, then I covered me up, didn't I? That wasn't a good thing either. Okay. Uh, this was in 2004. It was by the National Endowment for the Arts, and they found that not only is literary reading in America declining, but in fact, it's declining rapidly among all groups, but in fact, it is really declining in an accelerated rate among the young. So that, that brought them to the point of thinking that if we brought together a coalition of groups such as, this is the partnership, oops, it's not there, okay. 
The partnership is um, the Nebraska or the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, it also included. Oh, I think I have to go back to the homepage to show you. And this is a pretty slow move back, isn't it? All right. It also included the uh, IMLS. IMLS, Arts Midwest, some other groups that have the same commitment to reading and, and encouraging reading. And we'll go back to this. And what they decided was what they needed to do was to restore reading to the center of American culture. And they thought by doing this that they could make grants to libraries and other organizations to do these month-long book discussions. And the book discussions would include a kickoff event, and it would also include a variety of other activities, author readings, panel discussions, book discussions, events using the book um, as a point of departure. For example, film screenings. Some of these books have been made into films, and so these film screenings are a good way to to promote the reading of these books. At any rate, they made over 800 grants in the last three or four years since they've been doing this project. And I believe that grant program is now closed. They, there are no, they are no longer making grants. But that doesn't really matter to us because we are the beneficiaries of a lot of materials to help support this project. They created these materials. And so now we can use them in any way we see fit. And they are free of charge to Nebraska libraries and schools. So let's, why don't we go to look at what some of those materials are like. Um, I'm going to hold them up, but I don't think you can see them very well. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll pop up a little closer to the camera. What we have are kits, and the kits have a teacher's guide, which I will tell you a little bit more about in, 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 um, in a minute or two. But these teacher's guides are, are very useful. And they don't need to be used by teachers. They can be used by a librarian who's hosting a book discussion group, or even just a citizen, a community person who's hosting a book discussion. So this is a resource for your book groups I'm as well as other things. Oh, this is a resource <laughs> for your book groups as well as other things. In addition, they have these reader's guides, which can, are a smaller version of teacher's guides, and have got a lot of good information in them for the readers as they're reading the book. And the other really sweet thing in this packet is, mm -hmm. you can't see this, but it's a CD, and the CD has radio programs on it. And the radio programs can be used with your local radio station to promote the work that you're doing, or and the book discussions, or you can just um, give them to people to check out and listen to, because I guarantee you, if they listen to these radio programs, they will really, really want to do a book discussion and read the books. That's the whole point of it. And radio works great that way. For those of us that have done radio programming on books, we know that it gets yeah. people to read those books, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So um, let's go to one of these books that we have. It's My Antonia by Willa Cather. We don't actually have the books, but we do have the materials to help people talk about the books. And their website here begins by... Um, sharing some information about Willa Cather. And our people in Nebraska know a lot about Willa Cather because she was from Nebraska. But you can see that this is interesting information for people who don't know much and also who haven't seen photographs of her or illustrations. Um, Willa Cather commissioned these illustrations from a Bohemian artist for the mm -hmm. first edition of My Antonia. So this is the kind of thing I had never seen these these illustrations because I'd always seen the pictures that are in the more recent books. And this is 11-year-old Willa Cather. And, and you know, a lot of people have a lot of interest in Willa Cather and in my Antonia for a lot of reasons. Um, but maybe there are people in your community that don't have that interest. And that's where things like the Reader's Guide and the Teacher's Guide come in. Um, just to give you a quick idea of what's in the Reader's Guide, there's a short introduction. It's that little notebook I showed you. It's got some information on historical context. It's got information about the author, which is very interesting for people, I think. And other works by the author, always good, because it's the first one. A book is made with one's own flesh and blood of years. It is cremated youth. It is all yours. No one gave it to you. That's a quote by Willa Catherine. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that good? It also has discussion questions. And 
I really love this. Now, I have a book group that we don't often retreat to these discussion questions, but I always like it when they're there. Because sometimes we're having a discussion and it seems like in our book group, everybody has just said the same thing. The book has had the same effect on all these people around the room, and they're saying the same thing in a variety of different ways. And that's fine, but, you know, it is good then to be able to go to a discussion question and ask something that maybe they hadn't thought of. Why does Jim title his manuscript, My Antonia? What does he mean when he states, it's through myself that I knew and felt her? So that kind of thing can be very useful in a, dis in a group discussion, even though you might have good discussion going anyway, mm -hmm. to insert a question that's different from what everybody's talking about. When everybody's agreeing, it's nice to toss in something that they haven't agreed on or haven't thought about. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, get them. Th I think the best discussions are when people don't necessarily don't agree. Sometimes it's, uh, it's not that much fun, but it's, still, it's very interesting. These are additional resources, works by Willa, Willa Cather, here's a PBS video, here's a website at the Cather Foundation, another one at UNL for the electronic archives. I'm not going to go to all these because it's taking kind of a long time to go from one website to another for some reason, but I, I do think it's, it's interesting to see that it's got all these web resources too. So that is the the reader's guide. Now if we went to the teacher's guide, there's even more information. And again, even though you might not use this in, an edu in a formal educational setting, you might not need a schedule and lesson plans and all this kind of stuff, but there might be and probably would be something in here that would be interesting even in a very informal setting. So it's worthwhile having it. Um, let's see, they also have essay topics. And the essay topics are very much like what I was talking about before a question you can ask a group that will get them off the topic of what they're talking about that everybody's agreeing on. Uh, for example, this is a good one. As an adult, Jim tells Antonia, I have liked to have, I'd have liked to have you for a sweetheart or a wife or my mother or my sister, anything that a woman can be to a man. And he tells her sons, I was very much in love with your mother once. Do you believe him? Why does Jim never try to marry her? Now, that might not be something that would come up in the conversation, but it would be a good question to get people talking about something different. Again, another resource we have for all of these books is the radio show. And the radio show, as I said, can be used it is in the context of a real radio station. Obviously, these are short. They're designed to be played as a show on the radio. But you don't need to use them that way necessarily. If you have a radio show where you go on and talk about books, you could just use this part of this. And I'll show you how. Just a second. Here we go. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. If you can't hear this, because sometimes we have trouble with this, if for some reason you can't hear this, please just raise your hand or tap in the chat box. Type in the chat box. <laughs> tap on the typing keys in the chat box. Okay, here we go. Now, the big read. Yeah, obviously, you could cut the music out if you didn't want that. material out of which countries are made. No, there was nothing but land. Slightly undulating, I knew, because often our wheels ground against the brake as we went down into a hollow and lurched up again on the other side. I had the feeling that the world was left behind, that we had got over the edge of it and were outside man's jurisdiction. But I jolted on, carrying me I knew not whither, I don't think I was homesick. If we never arrived anywhere, it did not matter. Between that earth and that sky, I felt erased, blotted out. I did not say my prayers that night. Here, I felt what would be, would be. That was Garrison Keeler, reading from Willa Cather's novel, my Antonia. My Antonia was and is one of the greatest works that's ever flowed out of the fingers of any American writer. 
because when you read that, you really understand what it meant to pioneer here in America. And more than that, I mean, it's a boy meets girl story. It's, it's the kind of story that we all wish we could have written. It's a story about beginnings, beginnings of a country, beginnings of two people's lives. So it will be read again and again because it tells us how we can lead our lives with courage. It is about class differences. It's about memories of childhood. It's about immigrants and the Great Plains and hard work. Canada is the giant out here. All the rest of us writers are in the shadow. That book is kind of like a Mount Rushmore face. Some of the writing is the ceiling against which all great writing will have a bump. Welcome to The Big Read, a program created by the National Endowment for the Arts in partnership with the Institute of Museum and Library Services. The largest reading program in American history, The Big Read is designed to unite communities through great literature. Here's your host, poet, and former chair of the NEA, Dana Joya. Willa Cather's My Antonia is set in Nebraska in the late 19th century, a period in which pioneers were arriving in great numbers to settle and cultivate the land. When Cather moved from Virginia to Nebraska as a young girl, the wide expanses of the Great Plains had a profound effect on her. In My Antonia, the land itself becomes an undeniable presence. Writer and radio host Kurt Anderson is a native Nebraskan. There is something about the landscape of the plains that is unlike any other I've ever been in. The sky is huge and there are these fields of corn or wheat or whatever they are and there's something splendid about her description of that. Former U.S. Poet Laureate Ted Kuzer. Well I've lived in Nebraska for over 40 years now. She's right on with the uh, description of the prairie grasses and the colors and I wouldn't know where I was from reading it. There were no fences in those days, and I could choose my own way over the grass uplands, trusting the pony to get me home again. I used to love to drift along the pale yellow cornfields, looking for the damp spots one sometimes found at their edges, where the smart weed soon turned a rich copper color, and the narrow brown leaves hung curled like cocoons about the swollen joints of the stem. Trees were so rare in that country, and they had to make such a hard fight to grow, that we used to feel anxious about them and visit them as if they were persons. It must have been the scarcity of detail in that tawny landscape that made detail so precious. Author and jazz musician, James McBride. Well, I'm just going to cut this off there because I just wanted to give you a little taste of what the My Antonia radio program is like. And I think that all of you that are have worked with discussion groups um, can see how playing this CD would get people started. And also it's kind of cool that it's got people on it from Nebraska. I mean, it's got mm -hmm. Kurt Anderson, Betty Court, who used to be the uh, head of the Cather Foundation, um, Ted Kuzer, of course. I mean, I just, I just think, you know, that this could be a wonderful resource for all of you who want to do book discussions, and My Antonia being one of the books that people often want to talk about in Nebraska. It was the One Book, One Nebraska a few years ago. Yes. It was, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of, of use of our books, our book club kits. And we do here at the Library Commission have some My Antonia book club kits. And that brings me to something I want to really stress when we're talking about the big read. I have to stress it more than once. The big read materials are discussion materials. They are not books. So when you want to do a discussion with this, you can get the discussion materials from us for free. You can keep the discussion materials. You can give the reader's guide to the readers. Um, you can keep the, 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 the CD, I'm sorry, and a radio program. But in order to get the books, you're still going to have to use interlibrary loan or interlibrary loan our book club kits or um, something like that. So you'll still have to find resources to get the books, but we do have the resources to help you do the discussion and the activities and the library uh, promotion and that kind of thing of the program. So moving on, I want you to see that there are lots of books. And 
Um, how hard is it for me to get to my PowerPoint? Oh, um, there it is right idea. there. Yep. We have... There we go. We have an order form which we'll put up. Um, it can be put up along with our uh, recording of this yes, program. Yes. Yeah. Is it, is it PDF or Word? PDF. Or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll put the PDF of this up um, with the along with the recording when this goes up. Yes. Great. And so then you can just print this out, and you can just order what you need by sending this, emailing it, or faxing it, or sending it to me at the Library Commission. And you can tell me how many of each thing you want. Like, say, for example, you decide you're going to do something with the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. You could get uh, one of the audio guides. You could get one of the teacher's guides. Or you could get more, of course, of the teacher's guides, more of the audio guides. But you can actually get even more of the reader's guides. Because if you notice, we have 50 audio guides. We have 150 teacher's guides. We have 500 reader's guides. So we're anticipating but when you order this, you'll probably order extra of the reader's guide. So that's the one that actually gets given to each person who's in the in the group. Exactly. The group. That's the way. That's the way that works. Is the reader's guides go out to this the your customers, and they may not come back. Probably won't. Which is fine. That's the it's point. Fine. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, another thing, people have been ordering just a complete kit, and I've had some people send me an order form with abs. They want one of everything, so they're going to end up with complete kits for all of these books. These, and these we have in, in, um, in stock. We have them right here at the Library Commission, and we can make up these kits for you. That so, might be a good idea, I think, for someone who's not sure how these are like, what these look like inside and want to see, you know, what am I talking about for each of these? They get one of each thing, test it out, and then decide which one they want to get more of later to actually exactly. read, the, read the, the group. Exactly. That's what I think people are doing. They're looking at all of it, and then they're deciding which ones they're going to go with first, and then they'll put in another mm -hmm. order. Now let me tell you the easiest way to do this, if you can do this this week, would be to put your order in right now and I'll bring your orders, if you're coming to Grand Island at, to the NLA NEMA convention, I'll bring your orders to you in a package and you can pick them up at our booth at the NLA NEMA convention in Grand Island next week. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that works for you, it works for us. If that doesn't work and we get your orders after we get back from NLA NEMA, we'll have to work out a way to get them to you because we don't have the funding for postage to mail them. But we do go back and forth across the state a lot, yeah. so we can make sure you get them. There's commission staff traveling to various places that we just toss things at them. Here, take this. Take it to so-and-so. And, -so. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very nice and yeah. willing to oblige, thank goodness. So that works out pretty well for us. Um, in addition, there's a lot of people coming into Lincoln in November for uh, the BTOP, the Library Broadband Grant kickoff. So we'll be able to give to stuff get, to people know. then, too, if you want to get your order in before them. Or if you're just coming to Lincoln for some reason of your own, give a call and say, I'm going to be in town because I'm coming to do whatever and pop by and pick it up. Make up a kit yeah. for me. I'll be in town. Yeah, we'll do it. So that's just to give you an idea of the best way to order the materials. Let me go back here and show you. I, I want to make sure we get to a couple more books so that you can see. I think that this is so useful. Um, let me see if I can find some. Oh, I know what I was going to look for. Oh, here's one, The Wizard of Earthsea. Now, wow. again, this is a book that appeals to, and did you, book, hear, did you hear, did you hear, Kristen, she just moaned in <laughs> happiness over The Wizard of Earthsea. I love those books. I oh, know. God, oh, Ursula yeah. again. But the thing I love about this book is it can appeal to a wide range of readers. You could have an adult group very much interested in this, and then it was originally published as a young adult book, so you know you're going to be able to engage young adults in this. It is, but I've been reading them like as an adult, and it, it doesn't, it, it's okay. It's, it's oh. about um, kids who start out as young adults, the characters are, but they grow up too. They grow up. Things other, you know, so it's not just a kid's book, no, or even a young adult. Yeah, I got to tell you, I think this is a book that's got a tremendous amount of potential for be, being part of a book group, reading group, and I just don't know that it's being read very much anymore, and I'm sad to say that, but well, this, is, they, this is probably helping. This one, maybe, I don't know when they choose the books to be on here, but they did have the TV movie of this. Oh, so that this probably time helps. Within the last year, yeah. uh, Sci-Fi Channel or something, they did an Earthsea miniseries or movie type thing. And I think that brought some more attention to, to it because that was one of the ones they picked. It was very well done, too. <laughs> um, and you, that's another thing. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's another thing that they can use, right, Krista? They can use those TV movies, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. as part of your library programming because we have the motion picture license that we have purchased oh, right. to mm -hmm. assure that you're within your copyright, 
correct copyright. Yeah, so find out if there is a corresponding movie or something about one of these books. and. Yeah, and that's another way to do programming. But you'll see here, you can also print out the map of Earthsea. It, it's just very cool. It's really cool. Now let me just go here and just quickly show you the Reader's Guide. Again, all the same resources. Historical content about the author, other works, discussion questions, additional resources. It's just really cool. Let's see what they say about additional resources. They might actually say, okay, these are her other books and her website. They don't actually have the, the movie up there. but. And then at the Teacher's Guide, let's see if that's got more. Here's the Teacher's Guide. And again, very useful for discussion leaders. You don't have to use it in a formal educational setting. Let's see if the additional resources are good. Oh, are the same. They are the same, it looks like. The yeah. books about her. About, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. I bet you there would be something about it possibly on her website. You know. I would think. Oh, there would be a link to find it. Okay, let's check in with this radio show. You'll have to crank up the speakers again so they can hear it. Should it should still be all the way up. I didn't let's hear try it. Though. Now, the big read. <laughs> Watch the air between my hands. He turned away from others and stood still. In a great, slow gesture, he stretched out his arms. A gesture of welcome that opens an invitation began to speak. That's Kenyatta Rogers reading from Ursula K. Le Guin's novel, A Wizard of Earthsea. Welcome to The Big Read, a program created by the National Endowment for the Arts in partnership with the Institute of Museum and Library Services. The largest reading program in American history, The Big Read is designed to unite communities through great literature. Here's your host, poet, and former chair of the NEA, Dana Joya. A Wizard of Earthsea is the first book in a series of celebrated fantasy novels by Ursula K. Le Guin. This first novel describes the childhood and teenage years of a young wizard, Ged, as he grows up in a remote mountain village and begins to discover and master his powers. One remarkable thing about A Wizard of Earthsea is that it offers readers the excitement of a fantasy adventure along with the psychological depth of a realist novel and the ethical and ecological awareness of a philosophical text. Le Guin invents a rich and complex maritime world in which she sets the story, a place called Earthsea. Novelist Michael Shabon. Earthsea is a world of islands scattered in an archipelago across the surface of an enormous ocean. Author R.L. Stein. Each island has its own personality, and each island has its own geography, and its own mythology, and its own history. That strange communal isolation strongly characterizes the people and the world of Earthsea. Writer Pico Iyer. The book has for me the silver light of the Pacific Northwest where Ursula Le Guin lives, and I feel that I'm almost looking out on the sharp and steely maritime skies that you see in places like Portland and Seattle. But the fabric of it is, is very Eastern, and in that sense very ancient. Author of Wizard of Earthsea, Ursula K. Le Guin. As I recall, one of the first things I did was draw the map, which is the map of Earthsea that's in the books now. I just named the island. That was fun. I just irresponsibly gave, gave all the other names. I didn't know what happened on them or who lived on them or anything at that point. But there they were. There was my world to play with. The Island of Gaunt, a single mountain that lifts its peak a mile above the storm-wracked Northeast Sea, is a land famous for wizards. From the towns and its high valleys and the ports on its dark, narrow bays, Many a Gaudish men have gone forth to serve the lords of the archipelago in their cities as wizard or mage, or looking for adventure, to wander working magic from isle to isle of all Earth's sea. Of these, some say the greatest, and surely the greatest voyager, was the man called Sparrowhawk, who in his day became both dragon lord and archmage. 
His life is told of in the deed of Ged and in many songs. But this is a tale of the time before his fame, before the songs were made. Writer Kelly Link. Ged is a, a goat herd from a small island. He seems to have some kind of power that very few people in his village have. R.L. Stein. He's a kid. But he has these remarkable powers, suddenly, and he has to learn how to use them. Writer Orson Scott Card, using the small magics that he's learned and the deep power that's inside himself, he saves his village from invaders. Here is this army, this vast army, coming to this poor defenseless village. He does this fog spell and brings this incredible mist that confuses the invading army, and they're totally lost. He wins. It's his first major victory. In saving his village from the invaders, Ged uses so much of his strength and power that he falls into a frightening trance in which he cannot eat, sleep, or speak. Kelly Lynn. After Ged has sort of used up himself saving the village, a mage comes, a man named Ogion, who restores Ged, who gives him his true name. The world is... Well, I just wanted to cut that off because I didn't want to spend too much of our time listening to these radio programs, but they're, I think they're fascinating. I really think I could sit and listen to the whole thing. Yeah, I was noticing on the page for it that it's actually released, they're doing every two weeks as a podcast, as a regular podcast. So if you've got people who are into listening to podcasts about reading or about books or literature, this would be a great one to suggest to those people. And every two weeks they'll get a new um, program. <clears throat> um, they can subscribe. It said there you can subscribe to it on iTunes and everything, just like any other podcast that people listen to. Yeah, you know, I would think that if you you could just put that up on your website, a link to the podcast, sure, yeah. and if you're, you could say subscribe. our yeah. uh, our book discussion today is Fahrenheit 451, and let me go to this and just see how easy it would be. It's right there. It's right there. Subscribe. See, there yeah. it is. So you could just put that right up on your mm -hmm. on your website, and you could have a link to it, and people could start listening to them as a podcast. And I think, personally, just having listened to these, I think they're really going to get people interested in reading these books. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's a, a great way to get people, because they, yeah. they tell some of the story, but it does make you want to read them. And was, I also liked what's nice about these four, well, the ones they can, um, the authors of the books, if they're alive, <laughs> yeah, are participating in these talks. So it's not just other people talking about them. You hear from the actual author, which makes a huge difference to reading and getting involved in a story. I think it's so cool. The authors themselves explain what they did, like like Ursula Le Guin with right drawing the map first and not having a clue what the story was. But here's the map of what I'm working on, and now I got to figure out what all, what the heck all these islands are. It is so um, cool. I know. I've never known that reading the book, and it makes it different. It is so cool because you hear these things about what it's like to to be a writer and to, to think these, these things up and to come up with these fantasy worlds like that. And it, it's pretty cool. Um, we It's the same way when we have had the actually living writer for One Book, One Nebraska. We've had them go around and, and have, do programs in libraries, and it has been really valuable, I think. People really enjoy it. I know I took a, a group of, of older people to a author presentation and they may not have really loved the book but they loved the author presentation <laughs> so that part of it was really memorable for them they really enjoyed meeting the author and hearing the author talk about how the the book came to be and that's just like Krista just said in these podcasts there is some of that in there besides just reading from the book so um, I guess I, I want to go back if I can how easy this is going to be okay yes back to the big read order form um, to remind you that we don't have every book on the website. We just have the ones that are listed here. Those were the ones that they had extra and could make available to libraries, state libraries. But let me tell you what some of them are. I mean, like I said, there's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and it goes all the way from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer down to The Wizard of Earthsea. But there's some other ones you might be interested in. To Kill a Mockingbird. Again, lots of interest around that because it's Harper Lee's, I don't know, fit, was it the 50th? anniversary oh, of that yeah, book coming that out and yeah. so there's been lots of interest about that um, their eyes are watching God classic mm -hmm. absolutely classic never heard of a book discussion group who didn't have something to say about that <laughs> um, 
the shawl, that's not one I know, but it looks really interesting. Now I'm, now I'm really, you guys are all going to email me and say, I can't believe you don't know the shawl. But that'll be one for me to read. I've got one in here I need to read. The Maltese Falcon, another perfect discussion book because the... But everyone knows the movie. Exactly. But, the movie yeah. is a, an icon of American culture. Mm -hmm. And so you can play the movie, you can talk about it in connection with the movie, in, in comparison to the movie, so it's a great one. A Lesson Before Dying, that I hear is very popular with book groups. The Joy Luck Club, one of my all-time favorite books. Awesome Love movie. it. Also, great, <laughs> awesome movie. Housekeeping. Okay, there's a book that most people are not familiar with, and I am here to tell you, it is one of my top ten favorite books. It is just awesome. And there's a great movie out with uh, Christine Lottie that mm -hmm that is just fabulous. So again, being able to read the book and watch the movie and talk about the differences between the two. And I'm just, I'm just reading out some of these. This is not the whole list, obviously. But Grapes of Wrath, again, a very popular movie. The Great Gatsby, another very, very popular book. Great to talk about. Bless Me Ultima, if you're not familiar with that book, it's definitely one to get familiar with. So I'm just wanting you to take a look at the books in this order form. Take a look at the website, and let me know if you'd like to have any of these kits for discussion. And I think if there's any questions, now would be a good time to sure, ask them. Anything, go ahead and type them in. You can either type right in the chat box if you'd like to. There's a chat box at the corner of your screen. Or if you have a microphone hooked up, you can just raise your hand, click on that raised hand, and we'll unmute your microphone so you can talk to us. We'd love it. I don't see anything coming up immediately. Must have answered all the questions. <laughs> well, if you do have questions, you all know where to find Mary Jo. Absolutely. <laughs> and and um, if you uh, would like me to bring these out to the conference next week, just be sure and send me your order form right away. Yep, nothing coming in from the audience. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you so right, much, well, everybody. You, that is very, yeah, very cool, very interesting stuff, definitely. Um, We're very lucky to have these resources that we can yeah, give. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people free of charge. have any idea that they even exist or that we have them. So hopefully this will help get the word out and That's what get hoping. more groups going. Um, so we're going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to pop over here. There we go. And... Um, You need the Dang. keyboard? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out this one again. Is it still playing? Um, no. No. I didn't play go. that one. Good. Just sitting here. For, um, you know, normally what I do at the end of here is invite you to come and join us next week. However, next week we will be taking a week off from Encompass Live because, as Mary Jo is mentioning, it will be um, NLA NEMA conference. So um, go to NLA NEMA. <laughs> go to NLA NEMA um, conference. It's in Grand Island. It's in Grand Island. Registration, early registration is closed, but there is on-site registration available, so you can still go. It's, it's not a problem. Um, for the conference, there is a few events there that the commission is involved in. A lot of things. Some of us are speaking. Um, we'll hope there's also pre-conferences on Wednesday, a couple different pre-conferences. One of the ones that we're running is Library Camp Nebraska. This is be the third one, our on-conference. Now, still if you haven't signed up for that, can you just come? Yes, yeah, so you can show up. Since it's free, there's no there's no cost for the library camp, so um, there's nothing that you have to pay ahead of time or even pay if you do just show up on the day of. Um, we've got plenty of room in it still, so feel free to show up on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. We start 9 a.m. to... Um, Join us for that on Wednesday if you want to. Not a problem. Now, and we'll Krista, just take your name is it the there. kind of thing, if you can't get in at 9 o'clock, can you come in in the afternoon sure. only or something? Yeah, because um, the morning is mainly um, planning what we're going to do for the day, choosing the topics, whatever. Um, and then um, it's a breakout session throughout the whole day that you can just jump into and we'll have everything planned out. Um, there's a break for lunch in the middle of it. Um, but, yeah, if you have to come, if you're, like, on your way going to Grand Island but you don't get there until later in the day, find us. Um, Riverside Inn. Which hotel we're in. Riverside, I think. It? Riverside, yeah. <laughs> um, and find our room. And, um, yeah, you can just jump in and see what the topics are that are being talked about. It goes till 4, four o'clock. So you've got all afternoon, too, to jump in and just join the discussion. It's all open discussion. There's no presentations. There's nothing like that. It's just come in and share what you have to think about or say about whatever we come up with in the morning. 
Um, there is a Sounds website like for it. Yeah, if you do go to the NLA NEMA conference website, there is a link to the um, blog for the, the wiki blog. No, it's a blog, actually, we're using this year. For an... Um, library camp and you can see what the topics may be. You can sign up there to become uh, participate in it just off of that since the registration on the NLA NEMA page is closed. But you can sign up there and suggest topics that you might want right on there on the website. That's what we want people to do. But so even if you haven't suggested it. topics, you can still come. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. We're just saying, you know, let us know if you want yeah. to ahead of time. Um, there's also sessions that we'll be participating. Uh, lots of us are speaking at. I'm not even going to mention all of them because <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. Um, Thursday night, the Library Commission along with ITAR is hosting the Open Gaming Night. So hope you come to that. That will be at the Holiday. No, at Riverside. That's oh, at Riverside, sorry, Riverside too. Yes. Yeah. Um, Starting right after the banquet ends, 8 or so, whenever that's done, until whenever we're done. Um, and it will be a mixture of, there'll be the video games usually that we have, rock band, that kind of stuff. Um, a couple of Wii's set up with various games. But board games and card games we're bringing along. Um, anything we have want, that we want to share, anything you might want to share, games that you want to um, share with your colleagues, bring them along. And um, teach people how to play games. Um, and just hang out and have a nice fun evening of it. And we'll just stay there as long as we need to for the night. Um, related to that, our session right after NLA is about gaming. <laughs> um, Susan Franklin from per Hastings College Perkins Library will be talking about how they've been doing a regular series of gaming nights for the students. Um, and then we have our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, where he will be at Internet Librarian, a conference in Monterey, California. He'll be, he'll be broadcasting live from Internet Librarian, which means it will be 8 a.m. for him and whoever he manages to round up <laughs> his, his guests out there. So we hope you'll um, show up for that. And I think that's it. that's about all we know we about October. Yeah, <laughs> that's the end of October. Isn't More it? things coming in November and December, of course. Um, we do have a thank you. The materials are a wonderful resource for our library. Um, from um, Constance Manzer from Springfield Memorial Library. Oh, yes, thank fabulous, you. Constance! Let um, us know how many what yeah. you need. Take a look at it. Order something. So, um, if there is nothing else. We're good to go. Um, thank you all very much. Contact Mary Jo. Come, you know, sign up for upcoming sessions. And contact Mary Jo for more information about the Big Read and to order your stuff. And come visit us at the booth at <laughs> NLA yes. Grand Island. We're going to be there no matter what. <laughs> come to the booth and talk to us about anything. So thank you very much, and we will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye everybody.